probably the most important question is which bike is right for you because different bikes are right for different people things you need to consider suspension power tyres drop seats motor our bikes just have front suspension the full suspension is great if you're doing downhill and next time probably we might actually get to full suspension but you're going to pay four or five hundred pounds more for the privilege we bought the bikes with the biggest batteries we could find at the time 500 now you can get 750 I'd recommend going for the biggest battery you can afford the motor our bikes are cadence system which means the more you push the more power it gives you so that gives you a more natural feel drop seat we really recommend getting this it's, we use it so much there aren't many hills where I live so I've come to Spain especially to show you what it's like to ride up a serious hill and the GoPro doesn't always pick it up but this is a serious hill I'm almost effortless and I'm going up at five miles an hour you can just see ahead there's like a couple of hairpins I'm in active mode which is halfway between the lowest and the highest level you can see there's a hairpin here I'm riding one-handed I'm going to aim for the steepest bit of it and there we go just straight up it I'm going to put some pressure on now but still that is really steep as you can see there's some mighty big mountains behind me in terms of range depends on a number of factors how heavy you are the size of your battery which power setting you have the bike in and the only way you're really going to find out is by doing rides and just kind of gauging how far you can get sometimes I do steep rides and I can't get uh, as much range out of it sometimes I do very flat rides and I'm going up to like 60-70 miles on a really steep ride you know, I'll get probably 30 miles so it's still some good range this morning I rode up that mountain which was around 2,000 feet of height gain and that used up about 40% of my battery and I was in eco mode so not bad but that was far from easy you know in eco mode you're putting the work in there to get up I could have rode in power mode but then that would probably used all my battery getting to the top another thing to note is that 15.5 miles an hour these motors have to cut out so I'm at 4.4 .4. And these bikes are heavy. This one's 25 kilograms. So it's going to be harder to push on the straight than a regular bike. Here's the battery integrated into the bike. Looks really nice. Some people can't even tell it's an e-bike. This is a 500 watt lithium battery, 36 volt. And at the time of buying, this is the biggest battery that you could get and this is really important, it gives you range and power. Obviously you're going to need to charge your battery as well. So there's a charging point here and also with a key you can take the batteries off to charge. Quite heavy, I would say about three kilograms the battery. Notice how I took it off there, when I first got this it was quite difficult to get the batteries out. So to put it back in, just slot the bottom in, push in, to take it out, turn the key and I just kind of tap it like that until it's halfway out and then it lifts out easy. Probably the most important question is range. There are three factors that affect your range, your height gain, your weight and the battery. The battery is no good without a motor so here's the motor with its protective cover. 
When we were trying bikes out, we tried two different styles of motor. One, the cadence, and, and the other, a more of a constant feed of power. We like the cadence system because it felt more natural in terms of riding, but other people prefer the constant. So, really important to try out the different motors. This particular bike is 10 speed. You don't need that kind of big cog at the front to generate more power because you've got the power through the battery. This works really well, really simple. These tyres are tubeless. It's the first time I've ever used tubeless tyres. They're a bit tricky to get started with, they kept leaking air, but for the last year, touch wood, they've been brilliant. The idea behind tubeless is if you run over a thorn, your tyre doesn't go down. It's got a liquid inside it that fills the gap and you can keep riding. The one thing you do need to kind of be aware of is you'll need to pump your tyres up a bit more often with the tubeless because over time air does seep out. Tyre pressure. So if we're off road and it's slippy, we'll run at 20 psi. If we're mainly on road, then we'll run at 30 psi. The higher the psi, probably the more range you're going to get. A little bit of difference there. The chain's going to be important on an e-bike. You're going to be like an Olympic rider with the power you're putting through that chain. So with the extra power, it's going to come extra stress on the, on the chain. So I've never had to do this on a normal bike, but now I have to use this tool to check this to make sure it's not stretched. So the idea is it's got two sides of it. The first side is a 0.75 stretch. which it has already stretched 0.75 if I turn it over it's not quite there yet but when that drops in that's telling me that my chain is stretched I need to think about changing it we've already had one broken chain and we were a long way from home so it was quite a difficult thing to cope with so now I carry a spare chain and I always check it the brakes. So these are disc brakes, front and back. And what I've noticed is you are going to really wear out your brake pads fast with these. These are heavy bikes. You're probably going quite fast, quite steep. So there's a lot of wear on the brake pads. I've got through two pairs in a year and I'm now my third. But I've changed my brake pads from normal brake pads to what they call sintered brake pads. And these have metal filings in them to make them last longer. They were really squeaky to start off with, but once they're bedded in, they've been brilliant. They're about 15, 16 pounds online. This lever controls the seat. Really useful. I'm just going to press it now and show you what happens. You have to sit on it or put a lot of pressure to get back down again. It's really useful being able to higher and lower your seat. So when you're riding uphill, you want your seat high, so you've got lots of power you can put down through your legs. And when you're riding downhill fast, you need the seat low, so you can get a low sense of gravity. I would say this is one of our favourite features on the bike, apart from it being an e-bike. It is so useful. The only thing we've changed on the bikes is the seat. Most bikes come with a razor blade seat. We don't want to be riding for miles and miles and end up with a sore bum at the end of the day. So we put these on. You probably notice a couple of bags on my bike. Here and here. Let's have a look what's in them. So first of all, I've got a, a charging cable. There is a USB charging point on the e-bike, but it kept coming loose. So what I decided to do was carry a spare battery. And this is for my phone, so my phone doesn't run out of battery when I'm navigating. Next thing is spare chain. I mentioned that they do break. There's a lot of pressure going through the chain. I've got some chain links. So these are really easy to fit and it saves actually carrying a chain, but I carry both. I've got a device here to take chain links out. Some plasters. I do tend to fall off occasionally. multi-purpose bike tool and that's it, empty. In the side pocket here there's also 
the shower cap in case it no, it's for the uh, for the bike bag. So, in the back pocket, I bought this to use with the e-bike to charge my phone. It didn't really work that, that well. I don't carry a pump. Instead, I carry some uh, some gas. So basically, you can have you uh, never used it. <laughs> you screw that in there, put it over the cap. You probably get a tire's worth of inflation from one cylinder. Actually, they get super cold when you use them, so that's why it's got this protective case around it to stop your hands freezing. Puncture repair kit. You may ask why when I've got tubeless tyres. Well, if your tubeless tyre fails for whatever reason, you might need to put a tube in there. So I carry a spare tube and if that gets a puncture, then I've got some scabs to repair the tubeless tyre. So you can see I take a lot of precautions and that's only because I've been caught out quite a few times. Every time I get caught out, I buy something so I don't get caught out again. I've got two things on my handlebar here. I've got a GoPro mount and I've got this, this rubber thing. This is absolutely brilliant. Get your phone. Put your phone inside. And that is not going to come out. I've been down as rough as you can get. I've fallen off. I've gone at super speeds and it's been rock steady. Maybe sometimes it might do this if it's really, really rough, but that is not going to come out. Great little device. Can totally trust it. So let's have a look at the controls. To switch it on, press that button there. And as you can see, straight on, tells me I've got 42% doing no miles an hour and I'm in eco mode so to change the settings I've got these two buttons here which will take me up from eco mode to other modes and depending on how powerful battery you've got will depend on how many modes you've got this has got eco basic active sport and power. You can display different information on the bottom. We've got average speed, max speed, total miles done, range, cadence, trip time, and back to trip distance. So let's go through those and look at what they mean. Uh, range. This will change depending on the power. So at the moment it's saying I've got 15 miles left because I'm on a power rating. If I drop this down, as I drop it down, you can see I'm getting more and more range. Cadence. That's the efficiency of your pedaling. It's good to get it up really high into like have 70, 80, 90 cadence. Now you might want to reset these parameters. And the way you do that is you press both of these at the same time. So if I press both at the same time, that was about three or four seconds. And now you can see the trip distance has reset to zero. And as I cycle through again, average speed, max speed stays, total distance stays, range doesn't change, cadence doesn't. So it's just a couple of things of uh, reset there. There's also a button here for light. I haven't used it but you can attach a, a light and get the battery to power your light. The last button I need to tell you about is the walk assist which is this button underneath here. So if you're pushing your bike up a steep hill push that and it will help you up the hill. It won't go too fast but just a little bit, little bit of extra help.
handy tip. Let's say you've stopped and you've found yourself on the small cog so it's going to be really difficult to set off. Rather than struggle, why not change your gears while you're stationary, lift up the back wheel and press walk assist. I'll show you what happens. Magic! It's changed it for you. Shiny tyres, I'm liking them. So let's go for a road test. I'm in eco mode. Going up a hill at nine miles an hour, literally no effort. There's a bit of a hill up here, still an eco. I'm going to put it into active mode. And straight away, I've hit 15 miles an hour. And at 15 miles an hour, legally, it has to cut out. So, unless you're going up anything really steep, you're not going to need anything other than eco mode. Front suspension. You can turn it down there for to lock out the suspension, or if it's bumpy, I can turn it to the top. Again, really easy to use while you're riding. Just a brief note on riding style there. I stopped with the chain on the smallest cog at the back, so that meant it was really hard to set off. So what you want to avoid in that situation is putting all your power down. Just gently set off and then change the gears as you've got a little bit of speed to allow the chain to move. 